So what we're going to discuss about is like uh, we'll be pushing a code from uh, VSTS call this particular application simple w uh, ut it's a simple uh, ASP.NET web app okay and each and every developer would be pushing in this particular code into a VSTS account our VSTS account is this one uh, which we have created the your guys cicd.vagelstudy.com and this is a project which is there we have already checked in and we can see the project and our pushes would be uh, shown up here in this particular uh, uh, pushes uh, tab uh, what we are gonna do is like once the code is getting it uh, getting pushed into VSTS we'll have a, a trigger which actually uh, the VSTS trigger uh, which will be you know integrated with our Jenkins uh, Lin uh, Jenkins which is installed on a Linux machine okay and uh, this is uh, it is a page uh, we have we are accessing this particular Linux page uh, using our we are first SSH into this particular Linux VM uh, the Ubuntu VM on which this particular Jenkins is installed and using the Jenkins admin credentials we are able to log in or you know we are able to SSH into it once we are SSH into it we are actually have access to this particular uh, port 8080 we'll talk about how to enable them as well and once we have that we actually created a job okay so whenever a VSTS uh, code push triggers a uh, uh, call to Jenkins so the there would be a corresponding job to it which would actually build your code I mean it will take your code from the VSTS the branch which we are talking about if you select a master from master or other local branches mm, and then it would actually push your code into <clears throat> it will actually build your code and uh, sustain your code in workspace and then uh, from workspace it will take up take out the last uh, successful build and it would uh, push into the issue of a app this particular web app you can see the test 10 is already uh, deployed in and this is a complete flow we are going to talk about today so let's start with the vsds uh, project which we have uh, for it what you need to do is like you need to create uh, uh, like you need to go to the visualstudio.com and you need to register an account uh, with visualstudio.com so for, for your information visualstudio.com is uh, a, a sort of source control repo which is a little bit a little bit more futuristic than uh, what we have with the github so github just hosts a code uh, okay it doesn't uh, you know help you in uh, in like uh, have it doesn't have any inbuilt uh, deployment uh, uh, stuff you need to have uh, you need to integrate if you want to uh, push your code into your web app or something you need to deploy it uh, from uh, external triggers from web app or from other sources okay so uh, github being a public repo okay and uh, uh, so when i talk about github uh, github is this one uh, this is a public repo and there are local repos as well which uh, each and every enterprise companies uh, have them and uh, so once we have uh, our VSTS account get created, the Azure guy, uh, the CICD.visualstudio.com, uh, we can create a project. Once you have the project, you have the complete, uh, you can have, I mean, like you can create a project and then, uh, or you can import a repository as well, or you can create a new repository. Okay. So if you have certain code in your uh, GitHub, you actually can go and uh, import that particular code as well okay how you're gonna do is like you need to go to this particular clone or download button you need to click this clone and you just come to a VSTS and VSTS has you know a lot of adaptability with the github you can see this particular red icon which is a git repo icon which is there here okay it's it is sort of local git repo okay it's not in public and this particular repo can be made as private rather than the github the github which is there which is a public okay you can take this particular code and put into your own vsts account and you can make it private and you can make modify that particular changes and you know now you can maintain that particular code you can uh, trigger builds and releases you can have uh, users assigned to it you can create a task uh, assigned to it a lot of stuff uh, work or you can have you know load testing enabled onto it you can have probably unit test uh, case results showing up in this particular dashboards and test you can have you can you know have your own uh, uh, what uh, own Jenkins machine build uh, uh, build machine or agents which can build this particular code as well okay we want to talk about that so simply we have our code what we did is like uh, once I got this particular uh, project created I just go and uh, click clone so when I was talking about you know importing a repo yeah it is such easy just go to import repo and we have copied that uh, git repo clone okay from here 
from the log uh, the, from the github and you're done you just need to the, like if since most of the git repo are not uh, you know password based so that doesn't require any record uh, requires any authorization so you can directly go and import this particular repo and you can define what would be your uh, repo type whether it's a git type or it, it would be a tfvc type so according to that it would uh, uh, ubss account would create a um, you know possible uh, uh, interesting files or which is you know uh, vsds support or and the definition files or other configuration files which vsds uh, sort of pipeline supports and git uh, build support okay so that's how you import a repository or you can go and create a new repository as well if you don't want to like with the uh, the repository which you have created okay and you can create a new project at any any moment of time and you can create multiple branches as well and if you have multiple developers or multiple teams are working you can actually create multiple branches uh, for creating multiple branches you just go and uh, you have your code in master so when you create a branch your code would be you know need to be pushed in from either of uh, at least one branch should exist from where uh, your code can be you know, pushed out to your uh, other branches so you have a uh, uh, this one uh, master branch and you can you can have work items exactly uh, defined on your branch uh, on this particular branch like uh, uh, to whom you want to assign this particular work item or user story or this particular branch to which particular developer teams across uh, uh, which continent or country you want to uh, uh, you know assign them you can do that you can create a branch and assign them as a work item or you know give it as a user story that's possible so that's how you create a branch on VSTS and VSTS have like uh, have a lot of interesting things like it has an overview dashboard and the way you can actually put your like have your agents which uh, which are there to build your code are working fine or not or what whatever the status of your you know uh, work assign assignment uh, like what you assigned uh, you know, like how much work you have assigned and what other people are doing and was a backlog which is uh, are there and you can collaborate your code with multiple uh, people as well you can visualize uh, their work items work efforts which they are doing and this is one sort of you know uh, test uh, load testing which i have applied on top of uh, uh, this particular simple wa desktop dot net desktop uh, app which i built okay so you can see this particular everything result in a single dashboard as you would be seeing in uh, in our uh, you know dashboard as the same thing like what you whatever you see in your uh, an Azure dashboard, it's the same sort of stuff which had been brought up, okay? So you can see a lot of uh, different things and, uh, um, okay, you can see a lot of different things and what are the activity logs, what are the VMs you have created, and the, what is the load testing results, everything, okay? The same thing, the dashboard concept which has been brought up here, okay, to display it uh, very nicely. And you can build your own dashboard and, uh, you know, uh, customize your content you can customize your content by just clicking here and you can add more tabs you can add uh, the chart for build history like how your builds are going on uh, I'll click add so this is my build history uh, this is this is my build history which I've added already that's why it has shown up and I can configure this particular build history chart for build history I want to select uh, this one where I'm targeting my builds. Let's see. So for right now, it says that there's no build exist. Uh, desktop CI. So you can see there's one particular example where say desktop CI. Uh, this one particular has a successful build. Once you're done, you can click this and you can click on this. You'll get the more history about your build, uh, uh, build time and other stuff. Okay and what we gonna do is like you can see that this particular build was triggered uh, you know the committed the co code committed was this one and uh, the, the branch which was which from which it was initiated was master branch and the person who had requested this one is s and the queue name is hosted vs2007 so this is nothing but our build agent uh, stuff okay so what we are now inter interested in is like uh, we want our project uh, something called as uh, uh, okay, simple UT. Okay, and this whenever this particular you know uh, build triggers about this, there should be chart is to be build chart is to which should be displayed on my dashboard. Okay, for that what I do is like I have my at the existing this one. I'll just go and edit configure. Okay, 
and I'll just select my UTCI I can just save it so when I run some bills I'll get actually the history or how many bills have been succeeded or failed okay if it is failed it would be turn track if it is passed it would be uh, it, it would be still going okay so this is what uh, a little about uh, you know VSTS you can invite a friend okay like uh, for a free version of uh, BSTS you have uh, a limitation of five uh, different basic users okay and uh, each and every users can be called up or you know invited to uh, <clears throat> invited to your particular project uh, via via that email ID okay so it's not a compulsory that uh, I mean it would be great if they have their VSTS account you will have uh, more info gathered into your project okay if not also that's okay okay it would create a visual studio profile for the newer guys who are not onboarded into VSTS as well you can you know uh, just uh, give that particular uh, you need to add your uh, let me add dot chart 30 of whatever whatever domains you can actually add anyone okay you can just click save changes and that guy would uh, uh, get a um, save changes and will be that that's how like uh, a new member or the member a new member in your developer team had joined he can actually uh, you know start contributing into this okay and once you have that like if you, you have something called as the users tab as well where you can actually manage this users uh, let's go to my business Studio profile the very home page of uh, uh, I'll go to my business Studio profile okay this is my Studio profile I'll just go to no, not this that's your guys here CD okay I can go to my visitor profile easily navigate from here my profile okay and in my profile okay let me go directly otherwise So what I want to do is like uh, I, I have, I'll go to my work. I need to see my users. What are there? I um, mean the users are nothing but uh, uh, the our team. Okay, and uh, I want to. Okay, I'll go to my default team settings. Here I can see what are the users which have which were been added. Okay, and now I need to you know interested in uh, setting up these users with uh, uh, access like what or uh, define some policies like what they can do and what they can't I'll go to my security tab possibly yes I need to have a users here yes and security after you click on the security you get this particular users tab and in this particular users tab you can assign like uh, whether uh, so Maddie I have uh, assigned so the basic was would be you know it would uh, assign up a basic uh, access level uh, you can edit this particular access level okay in order to uh, you know if you have your stakeholders or BSD, uh, other subscribers uh, you can assign them as well okay they can manage their this particular code from their own VSTS account as well okay they I mean they can fork it or they can clone your code into their VSTS account and start contributing there and then the code would be you know uh, pushed into your account so you can have uh, stakeholders as well which uh, who doesn't need to have a code level access uh, it's a basic level access you can assign them okay and uh, both, like uh, after you change them you can send invitation as well okay that's how things happen and that's how you maintain a users on VSTS. Uh, let's go to my project. So there's my project. Get back to it. I have a code tab. I can see all related to code, my branches, pull request, everything. Okay, the pull request is important in case where uh, uh, you have your master branch here. You can see, I'll just go to the code. Uh, you can check here like I have a master branch okay if people from other uh, I have another branches as well and the complete you know the uh, master branch would be the branch from where your code would be pushed into uh, 
into your web app or into your production machines okay in that cases if you have your uh, uh, teams working from i'll have uh, uh, team europe okay i have a team europe who will be working on this uh, and I'll just create a branch for them. So what it would do is like it would uh, take up this particular code and put into the team branch. So uh, in the team branch people, the users, if they have MSJ subscription or uh, or at least they have, uh, uh, you know, a normal Visual Studio to run a code and, you know, deploy the code and check in their code into this particular Visual account, uh, account, they can do that. So they can uh, check in their uh, code uh, to this particular team Europe. I'll be giving access to uh, at this particular code level, okay? I won't be giving access to at master level branch, okay? So uh, I'll have users here who can actually assign them like this team Europe members. I'll be adding them uh, uh, for this particular branch check-ins and they can check in the branch and they can, you know, they can create a pull request whenever uh, they can say that there's a new pull request and they can check in this particular pull request or when once they go put the code on to team europe they can actually uh, create an invitation setting that uh, we want to push a code from team europe to our master branch okay so the master branch is the main branch where we have a stable code and uh, from where that uh, you know goes to QA and the production and uh, everything else. Okay, so that's how a pull request would be changed. Since uh, I don't have any changes here, that's why you, you don't see any changes in this particular pull request. So once a pull request is uh, uh, created, you can actually uh, let me check. Let me try to do a change. You can actually do the changes, or you can read this particular files. Uh, from here and uh, uh, what I'll do is like I'll try to change certain file in here okay and then I'll create a pull request so that you'll get a more idea on this what I'm talking about so we have default.aspx page okay I want to edit this particular page okay so you can without Visual Studio you can actually if there are minor changes and you want to push into your um, Europe branch so you can commit it so team Europe commit so if you if you want to make certain uh, very minor changes yeah I mean it's not uh, prescribed way of doing this uh, but when you do this particular request, you can have you need to have a work item. Okay, without work item, I'll just commit it. Okay, once I commit, yeah, I can go and check whether uh, like I'll be able to create a new pull request with the new changes from uh, my local branch to you know from to the master branch. Okay, and uh, to whom you want to add this uh, review is like I can add Maddie dot John. It's currently, I'll call Gmail. Recognize because I've already he's a member of uh, the master branch. Okay, I can give him because they have a basic authentication as well. And, uh, and I'll be the issue guy 007 at gmail.com. This guy is also having access and myself. The person who had checked in to port is dirishwad.com, okay, and he's also an you know, approval for this, okay. I'll just create a pull request, okay. The reviewer does not have permission, okay. He doesn't have a basic permission, that's why he's not able to do that, okay. I'll just create a pull request. So, my pull request has been created. Okay, so since I'm a Girish calamity and I can see this particular pull request which is happening. Okay, so once I say that I can actually add some curtain, certain comments or I can see what is the updates had happened, what had, what this particular team had uh, put on. Okay, what are the files they have modified. Okay, this is a file. That's great. This looks... Since uh, he had not added a work item, I'll mention, please add add work item next time okay and I'll just uh, click this button 
okay so that's how like whenever this particular comments would be you know uh, so would be seen by this particular uh, uh, the person who had created okay from team europe and uh, once he says that he addresses that particular comments and since that is me itself okay he says that he will take care from next time he just replaced onto it okay that's okay then i'll just go and approve this uh, up, uh suggestions i've already given so i'll uh, just approve you can have more authors as well okay you can approve any of the uh, authors can actually this one do this particular approval and i can click complete so when i click delete team europe after merging now i don't want to uh, change you know delete team europe yes complete merge keep that team europe as it is and once my merge actually you know uh, uh, my merge is completed and i should be able to see my changes in uh, uh, my master as well so the main change the changes which are you know uh, uh, pushed from Team Euro branch was uh, uh, into the default.aspx page. So this is our default.aspx page, and I can see so Team Euro branch changes have been reflecting here. Okay, so that's what like uh, how you can you know how you can create a pull request, and you can see file commits, pushes, everything. You can manage multiple repos. It's everything. You can have your work. You can assign a work items to anyone, uh, like. You can create a user story, you can set up sprint, sprints as well. Or if you want to do a more of visual type or geo type of uh, handling stuff, and you can create uh, items like this. Okay, I can create any of the items uh, like uh, new items or task, everything in this particular uh, sort of you know, uh, the complete uh, uh, sprint or the backlogs which are there, uh, whether they are resolved or you can create sort of bugs as well, everything. Okay. So, okay, so that's a thing. And you can have test plans, everything uh, you can have for test machines also you can have, which can actually uh, run sort of load uh, or tests on top of your uh, machine. Okay, for that you can uh, have your test machines. Okay, you can have your physical machines on Azure. Okay, uh, and then you can assign this code order to your local as well. And assign this particular, uh, uh, you know, uh, machines to run your loads. You can add up, you know, a summary of this particular project in, in your wiki and what are the bugs or issues which are res resolved or, you know, which are open or what are the enhancement or what are the future uh, futuristic things which are going to come. Everything is in the wiki. You can mention that. Okay. So th that's sort of, you know, uh, it's completely different from GitHub what we have. So GitHub uh, just has, you know, a fine uh, collection of uh, codes okay and that particular code can have you can create branches in here as well okay there's no problem you can have multiple depositories okay and you can share the, this particular code to multiple peoples and you can have you have marketplace as well where you can have you can actually integrate your github code to other stuff okay and you can have deploy this particular code by using the other plugins okay so other plugins what they do is like if you have an azure fab app or azure function uh, then Azure function can make a call to GitHub stating that if you have any recent changes in the repo, then I'll take your code. So the GitHub responds back saying that, yeah, I have a recent changes. Uh, the last changes was this and the recent changes was this. Do you have the last changes in your uh, database or not? If not, uh, if yes, then if not, then take that particular uh, uh, build as well and this one, the newer one as well. Okay, that's how everything works with GitHub. Okay, and you can see that there are a lot of features which are there in VSTS rather than on GitHub. But you know, the, most of the open source uh, people, you know, they, they prescribe GitHub. Okay, so that's why like uh, GitHub is, has been integrated with VSTS very well uh, right now. So we'll go to go back to a code and our particular stuff which we were talking about, you know, like we'll be pushing a code uh, from a VSTS. So this particular code would be, you know, uh, my 12th code. So in order to connect your Team Explorer to a VSTS account to your Visual Studio account, you need to click this particular icon. Okay, once you have this particular icon, you can actually uh, manage connections okay when you click manage connections it will connect to your vsts account uh, you need to give uh, the vsts credentials once you have that you can have all your repos coming in and it would show up here okay and your, your branch whatever check-ins you will do it will reflect in your branch okay i'll make my test 12 for testing vsts uh, and chunk in pipeline uh, okay i'll just commit my code 
Okay. Since I, 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 mom, you know, I have been, you know, permission onto my master branch, so I'll push my change into the master branch directly. Uh, I'll mention this particular code as, you know, the change as the same thing, and I'll just click commit all and sync. Okay. So commit all would, you know, uh, push your code, this particular code, into your local Git uh, master, local Git master repo, which uh, uh, which is being created in in your local. Okay, it won't uh, check into your master repo of uh, which is existing in your in your VSTS account. Okay, so in GitHub, the thing is like that. You will have a local master repo as well. Okay, so for every master repo or local branch which you create in VSTS, there would be a branches in local as well. Okay, and you can actually when you commit all, it will push onto your local master. When you say that commit all and uh, push. It would push into your uh, uh, the VSTS master account. Uh, it would push into here, this one. Okay, but uh, think of a scenario like where other developer has also had also made a change in this particular particular line, and it can you know it would with this particular commit would just override his changes. So what uh, we prefer is you can pull the code and you know you can uh, sync up the code, okay, and push a code. So for that only you have so commit all and sync, okay. And what it would do is like uh, it will actually uh, pull the changes first, and then it would, and then it will you know, it will try to sync your changes. You know, it had created your uh, outgoing commit here, and it's uh, syncing your, it's pulling your current branch, okay, and it will check your that particular current branch doesn't have any conflict with this particular line number seven, which has been added by this particular user, okay. So there were no. Uh, Pull computer with conflicts in the simple UT repository to resolve the conflicts. Yes, so this is a way. Like I have a team Euro teams which uh, who had actually, uh, you know, uh, pushed up their changes in here, right? So this is a change which team Euro branch uh, they have pushed in. But uh, I have my changes which is a test well and this is a most update. But you know, I didn't take this particular changes and that's why it is showing this particular changes. Okay, I'll tell you to what I'll do is. Uh, uh, have I conflict? Okay, I'll keep that their particular code as it is, and what I'll do is like I'll put my code. STS or Jenkins. I just add my changes as well and put this as 12. Okay, so resolve the conflicts. Uh, the conflicts has been resolved. Okay, and uh, I can go back and uh, I can try again. I can about this. Yes, since I have resolved that particular conflict, uh, when I when I do my next check-in, it should not be a problem. Okay, and okay, so this is a change which I have done. Team Europe had done. It is showing that particular commit. Uh, what I'll do is like I'll pull the change. Okay, it will take all of the incoming commits, which are conflicts. Okay, this is a conflict. I'll just click merge. Okay, so we in using the merge, we can actually put this code. Yes, I want the changes which are made by Team Europe as well, uh, and I want my particular changes as well. Okay, I'll just click this one as well. So it will add just a line below it. Okay, once I have done, I'll just click accept merge. So that's how your both of the uh, you know changes are you know are existing. So I'll just click commit merge. So committed merge committed. Team Europe changes as well. With, with my changes. ESTS chunking. Okay. Commit stage and sync. Okay. 
So I would again uh, make a uh, one more pull and check whether there are no uh, changes had been done after this particular Team Europe commits as well. And then you can see that both of my commits uh, had went to into my VSTS account. And you can see that. So once I have my commit uh, uh, code which uh, went into it, I have a trigger. Okay. And you you can see this particular trigger in your service hooks. You need to define your service hooks, okay? And uh, how you define a service hook? If you want to integrate this particular code with, if you want to build your code with Jenkins, yes, you can actually do that. And uh, uh, like, uh, so this is a service hook which I have, and I have pushed in my code in here. And for that, you need to configure like uh, uh, this particular service hook, which can trigger a call to Jenkins and many other, uh, you know. Uh, uh, build uh, deployment solutions and I'll have this particular code uh, put, uh, checked on this particular code pushed and I'll select the project and my branch and any members and I'll click next and I'll set up this trigger get build okay and I need to give my Jenkins uh, details okay and uh, the Jenkins details and the Jenkins user which you need to create uh, this is a custom user or you know the user which you create after uh, uh, you create a Jenkins uh, uh, a Jenkins uh, VM, okay, Jenkins application on a Ubuntu VM, okay, and this user is not the admin VM, okay, for your kind information. And if you giving your admin uh, information or admin user, that won't work, okay. And you can test this particular connection how it is, how it's working. So using a, a Fabricam Git, Git master, it would actually make uh, this particular connection. Even the you make uh, made a request and it got succeeded, which means that your uh, this particular trigger is able to talk with the Jenkins machine, and then you can click uh, finish. So I'll go to my history. I just pushed in my code, right? So my code was pushed into. Uh, I just go to my code, and I'll just check my pushes. What happened to or what are pushes have been done? On to this particular master, I can see like uh, Team Europe commit had coming come up, and uh, and after that uh, this particular uh, like my code with the Team Europe code as well onto the branch. Okay, so that particular change had come up, so it need to trigger a call to call it my this one trigger. So whenever you push a code, a trigger would happen at VSTS, which actually calls your Jenkins server. So you can see that succeeded just now. Okay, and request and the response are happened to end it. Okay, and uh, you can see this particular Jenkins machine uh, should have my recent changes. Yes, hash 41 job was created and it has my details. Test 12 VSTS Jenkins release pipeline detail. Okay, so so you can see I'll talk about uh, Jenkins how it is pushing on to. We have test 10 the Azure web app which we created okay first we're gonna talk about a Jenkins VM how we gonna you know bring this particular Jenkins VM how we gonna connect and configure everything and then we'll know about how to create Azure web app okay and then we'll talk about so what uh, what you need to do is like into in order to get a, a simple way of uh, getting a Jenkins machine is uh, you go to a marketplace Azure marketplace where you get uh, I'll click Jenkins Okay, I want a Jenkin master. Okay, which actually Jenkin master can do this particular uh, uh, deployments, the build stuff and the deployment stuff to web app. Okay, I just create this particular Jenkin. So this is actually a template which comes up. Uh, you need to give all the basic details. You can give your password or if you're if you're a hardcore Linux guy, then you can go with SSH public key and uh, and you can create this particular SSH public key with uh, on Windows using uh, your Putty generator, Putty Gen. Okay, it's a very lightweight tool which you can install uh, when you like you can click on generate and you can you know move your cursor like this it would generate uh, a random key a random public key uh, and a private key okay so the public key you can put that particular public key onto your uh, uh, Azure okay and the private key this is a public key okay and you can uh, uh, you know take up this particular uh, uh, complete public key uh, let's copy this particular complete public key okay and I can save this particular public key and private key in my local as well because I would require my private key which can be you know attached to this particular putty okay so putty is this particular tool for SSH and like you need to present a private key okay uh, 
so you can for a public key so that's how like without password you can work out with this one so you can create a Jenkins machine okay so basically it's Ubuntu uh, Jenkins installed on Ubuntu so the template it's Azure uh, template which it comes up like that okay the Jenkins release type also you can mention so you will have uh, the, this release type also installed onto this particular Ubuntu machine so that's how you go and procure a uh, Ubuntu machine so once you procure a Ubuntu installed with Jenkins that's the easiest way of getting a, a Jenkins uh, rolling on so you can click connect okay so this is uh, it is saying this is such on to this so I'll copy that and then I'll paste it onto my uh, putty okay and uh, so I have one I load that's the same and the port is 22 and I'll open okay but before going to this you need to actually open 8080 in order to you know in order to access application which would be a Jenkins application which would be hosted in this particular VM uh, on your browser you need to open this particular 8080 port okay so for that you need to go to the networking tab and once the networking tab loads up you will need to add an inbound rule okay uh, when you click uh, the default inbound rules okay it would add your port 8080 Okay, so you can click here and you can add port 8080 like this since I have already added that's why it's showing like this particular ID. Okay, and I can mention the port 8080. Uh, once I mention that port 8080, now the traffic can go into this particular VM, but still outbound is not possible via 8080 because we didn't uh, describe any outbound uh, rule for this particular VM. Okay, so once we have this particular uh, port 880 also enabled on this particular machine, uh, we will uh, go to the overview, and uh, so this is uh, a this is uh, a place uh, where you can access. You know, your application would be accessed. Uh, what you can do is like you can copy this, okay, and you just paste this particular URL. Okay, the URL which you will get is uh, this one. Okay, and you need to have 880 applied onto it so that you can open your Jenkins page so the very first time when you open a Jenkins page it will ask you about initial admin root password okay so when you SSH you need to actually do I have discussed in my previous videos where I talked about Jenkins integration with VSTS you can follow that particular uh, video as well okay once you have that and uh, uh, like uh, you have embedded with port 8080 okay once you have done that uh, like you actually create an initial admin password and then you create a custom uh, custom user as well okay you I created uh, certain users like this I have uh, for, uh, three users one is Jenkins admin and Jenkins user 2 and Jenkins user 1 okay so this is uh, a logged in with Jenkins user 2 uh, who is creating this particular uh, who had created this particular job okay and each every user have different views as well okay and uh, once that is done your Jenkins stuff is uh, you know set up uh, you put it like you need to search before accessing this particular URL okay once the URL comes you can actually go to the like the main landing page would be this you uh, you need to create a job okay and uh, you'll create a new item and for this particular project where you need to have a project uh, in VSTS built up automatically and push that particular code into web app you go and select a freestyle project okay and uh, once you select that freestyle project one one particular freestyle project which I created so it would create a Jenkins uh, job okay so once you create that uh, you'll get this particular uh, sort of you know configure page directly you need to mention your project name okay that's Jenkins build and uh, uh, you need to uh, take up this uh, particular git repo you need to authenticate your git repo okay for uh, the, the git repo when i say it like the git repo which is on vsts okay so this is my code yes okay the uh, go to my code jenkins okay i'll open up here and then it should be so this is my code and onto it I actually need to you know uh, the authenticate this particular VSTS account with my Jenkins uh, machine okay how to authenticate they can be authenticated via token or something right or a user credentials so what I'm gonna do is like uh, I'll just go uh, to my code simple AUT and I'll click on something on uh, code and then I click on clone okay when I click on the cloud it will clone it will say that generate kit credentials so I have already created click kit credentials okay so this particular kit credentials you need to give so that uh, the this particular username and the password 
okay and you can create a path token as well instead of giving a password okay and you can create a path token and how you will create a personal access token is this way and you go to the security token and I have created certain uh, path token new path token something like this okay and you can create a path token specific to certain bills or something okay you can mention them, mention them here and then you just create save and you can enable for one year or something whatever token you create and you can modify them yes you can save it but the path token was displayed it won't be displayed again you need to delete it and you need to uh, you know uh, so you need to have certain kind of secret store or you know repository from where actually you can uh, save these particular secrets and then get them at uh, whatever time with a the, like in a safe manner uh, like you can say this all pad tokens like that once you have this that particular pad token you can give instead of your username and password okay and uh, instead of your password and you have username and password once you have them uh, you just go to your Jenkins uh, this one you give the repository URL so the repository URL is nothing but uh, that's uh, when I click close there's a URL okay so it doesn't need to bother about that and you need to add something like this go and add your credentials so that's my username and credentials I'll give my username and password and done so I have add and after that you need to select say I have a lot many you know uh, credentials which I've added you can add like this and then select the credentials why this this particular repository can be authenticated if it's not authenticated, it will you will it will give a red warning here okay and you need to mention the branch from which this particular Jenkin would take or clone the code from your VSTS account and then it will build your code so uh, I mean most of the people doesn't mention this you need to build the check on this build when a change is pushed to TFS or team service okay once a build trigger you mentioned that okay so for, like whenever a change occurred in there you'll get a trigger or even my github you know my, my Jenkins can make a you know peep on to it and then get a, a changes uh, when a change occurs on particular TFS item even we have triggers enabled on from VSTS as well and like you can have uh, the, the most of the simplest way of you know uh, creating uh, uh, or pushing your code uh, a successful build on to your web app is this way okay you need to uh, create uh, uh, you need to add your credentials your azure credentials in case you have an azure account and the azure credentials would be like you can go with the username and password okay but i would love to go with microsoft azure service principle so when I go with Azure Service Principle, it would ask me a certain few amount of details. Okay, so this particular Azure Service Principle would work on OAuth 2.0 token endpoint. So when I talk about OAuth 2.0, then it would be a uh, you know it's it would be sort of open ID authentication with uh, uh, my Azure Active Directory. So what I'm gonna do is like I'll be I'll have my I'll have an Azure Active Directory. Uh, so active data which I've used is this is the Azure Guy AAD app. Okay, so I'll go and uh, I'll just uh, search for my Azure Guy AAD app. Azure Active Directory. So this is my Azure Active Direct B2C. Okay, B2C. So this app, the Azure Guy AD app, I have. Okay, so this is a directory which I have, Azure Active Directory, and in this particular directory, this is a B2C directory. Okay, you can have a normal directory as well for this sort of work, and it's not completely converted B2C. You can see that you know I need to link a subscription to it, an active subscription for this, and you can do that. Uh, I'll talk about this in later sessions, and uh, you just go to the applications. You can add an application. Okay, and in application you can mention like what kind of application you are developing. It's a web app or web API or native client or something. Okay, once you have this particular web apps, right, you can actually uh, go to this particular web app, and every web app will give you an application ID and a, a key. Okay, key you need to create it. 
okay you will create it and uh, when you need to generate a key and save it uh, this is also one time you can see that okay and if you want one more you need to generate one key, one more key okay you need to take your application id which will act as a client id and by by adding these particular details into your uh, uh, jenkins machine it would make sure that it can make an auth call to your azure active directory okay so i'll just click add my jenkins credentials okay it's pretty slow i'll use my service principal okay so i'll give my subscription id subscription id you can get from any of this place uh, from uh, in your subscription and then uh, you will have your application id and you need to have a key copy them and go to here and give your client id which is application id okay and a client secret okay and this particular thing is what to token endpoint so it would make a call to this particular tenant id so when i talk about tenant id it's nothing but uh, my azure active directory okay this complete url you have to copy it okay and uh, so once you do that you can see that like it will make a call to your graph endpoint for this application and it will and verify service principal i have not added my client id so it would our subscription id is missing that's why it is throwing error so but once you add everything like uh, once you add and you select this particular uh, thing which you have uh, just added the credentials and it would display uh, all of the details or whatever wrap you, which you have uh, on this particular uh, account so you can see that i have numerous number of applications which are uh, there in this particular uh, uh, subscription okay so uh, what is the best part is like uh, i want to uh, see an application which is uh, an app web app which i have created okay so web app azure web app is an app service uh, feature itself okay where you can host it's it is sort of uh, upgradation or uh, second version of azure websites okay so i have created one particular web app like this okay and i click add and i, I just add a web app okay uh, it doesn't need uh, more configurations and you can deploy your code via code via kudu everything you can see this particular uh, kudu stuff you can have a performance test or load test on top of it you can add extensions each and everything and you can actually go and uh, uh, have this particular deployment options where actually you can get your code from github directly or something but since uh, our motive was you know to build a code uh, uh, we we build our code using Jenkins. Okay, so Jenkins is a, a sort of you know, an external build machine which we have, uh, which we have uh, integrated with it. Okay, so for this we need to have uh, you know a certain configuration like this. I'll select a resource group name and the app name. Okay, once I that I just uh, check on my apply button. Okay, then everything is done. Okay, so everything is set. You have your uh, external build server. And you have that particular build server to be deploying into your Azure Web App as well, okay? But why would you know uh, one can one would go to a, uh, having an external build machine, okay? So the main uh, reason for that is like with VSTS you have uh, if you are using a, v, a free VSTS uh, sort of credit you get a very limited amount of you know build uh, uh, time, okay? So you can see that uh, you will have something called as agent queues. Okay, you get uh, for building your machine at a central repo by a central build machines. You need to uh, have uh, build machines defined. Okay, so whatever machines you can see that default hosted VS 2017 means this particular hosted agent is you know running with 2017 uh, um, version of uh, version of OS on it, and then uh, it would actually run your .NET uh, build your .NET application and uh, you know it would uh, give out your results you can see that lot of many you know release problem which i have created they failed a few of them uh, got succeeded okay so that's how you know uh, like you can have but for this part particular pipeline what we did is like we actually integrated our build like we defined a trigger service hook right so what uh, this particular service hook would do is like uh, we have service hook here so service hook would do is like we actually instead of calling a uh, you know uh, the the agent trigger git build since I've selected Jenkins while I'm doing that that's why it is showing that Jenkins stuff okay so for this particular service you need to go and create a new subscription okay I opted for Jenkins okay so when I select the Jenkins I'll it will take out me you know what are the details which I've discussed by creating this particular trigger hook the same thing you have you know uh, the 
with the uh, app service I just told a lot of different things are there you can try out okay that's how you create a new service or subscription okay so whenever code is checked in it is not you know going and calling this particular uh, default build agents which I have in this BSTS because I get very limited amount of you know build time means my I can build my code on this particular hosted agents for very limited amount of time because I have not bought a you know enterprise version or license version of this enterprise version of uh, this okay so I can have something sort of local agents if you don't want uh, uh, to have your uh, 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 external uh, agents like build agents like Jenkins to be set up you can go and download an agent okay so one such an agent which I have downloaded is the Windows agent okay what you can do that like uh, this particular agent you can run in your local okay for that you need to download that particular package file okay and then you need to run this particular sort of commands in your bash or command line and then you're done like whenever you click this particular run node cmd okay and you you will have your local agent ready okay so one particular thing is i've downloaded my agent into my local this particular laptop okay and uh, i've stored my local agent in some folders like this uh, i've stored in i have tools I have my build agent BSTS. I have agent installed in here. Okay, so what I can do is like uh, uh, you can see the status of my agent is offline. Okay, if you want to trigger a build by this particular local agent, what you can do is like uh, uh, after you install everything, your downloaded agent and install on your machine. Uh, what you can do, just go to the path and click CMT. It would run. It would go to into your path and you just uh, uh, click that run dot CMT. So that's nothing but a file in here okay so which triggers a call uh, the, I mean it would run a process in your local okay which is this particular agent is running a local okay and it would communicate with BSTS stating that yeah I am alive I'm going to turn into green and I'm ready for taking uh, any of the build uh, uh, jobs which uh, would be triggered to me okay that's it like uh, instead of you know uh, you can have this pool of agents that's what this manage pool says uh, pool of agents where you have a combination of you know a default BSTS agent you have local agent and now we have something called as Jenkins builds as well build server as well okay so this says yes this turn green you can see that my process is online and uh, you can see it's listening for jobs if any jobs are there it would be you know trigger running job release it got some particular uh, last release job line uh, release stuff on top of it so it's uh, actually building that particular code okay so that's what like irrespective of you know uh, developer teams are triggering a lot of jobs okay you can have this particular build machine to run at night time or in fortnight uh, every every night and then it would build your code and put into your central repo the successful build in the central repo or if you have built some actions on top of it stating that uh, push that code into particular web app or something yeah it will do that so instead of uh, using this particular local or something we have just used jenkins uh, uh, build server okay so jenkins is a third party solution and it, which is available or well integrated with azure right now and uh, you, as i talked about like you can like uh, once you create a build or the build is succeeded right last uh, 41 is a build when we actually check in our code okay uh, that was our code which we have checked in and which had triggered service hook and uh, Jenkins had heard about that and then it went and created a build hash 41 so you can check the build hash 41 what it did is like uh, it had went and cloned your uh, uh, code into its workspace okay and then what it do is like it build that particular complete code from your master branch and then it actually uh, took out your code and pushed into your Azure web app which you have given in your uh, configure page of Jenkins and then like I have one more like pipeline as well which creates a release pipeline onto my VSTS account okay so that that's a one which is actually uh, you know uh, the Jenkins build would create a release pipeline I which I have done okay that's what this particular job which I've created recently with this particular local agent right it had uh, ran that particular application mm, this particular you know that you can set up this release pipeline you can you want you I can show you that uh, how, how my release pipeline would look 
So my this particular list pipeline uh, have something sort of like instead of you publishing directly from you know Jenkins, if you want to create a release pipeline and push that particular code into Azure Web App, yes, you can do that. Okay, so for that, what you need to do is like you can you need to create a release pipeline, release definition. Okay, create a release definition, and you need to add this particular one particular Jenkins build uh, artifact. You need to select this particular manage. Uh, and point like when you click this particular manage so this is a jenkin vm endpoint okay so the jenkin will make a call to uh, trigger a release okay release a definition or a release a create a release pipeline so for that you what you need to die, like uh, you need to add a configuration about your jenkin mission so you will get the jenkin mission you will get the base url so the base url is nothing but uh, it's uh, uh, the this particular URL with complete 880 till this 880. So that's your base URL, Jenkins base URL, because Jenkins is need to need to contact with this particular. Uh, you know, it it need to create a release pipeline, but for that it need to Jenkins should have an uh, you know uh, a read or uh, uh, write access to create it right. So we create we give a right uh, authentication like that by adding the particular Jenkins uh, details in here and the user details. You can make a call to it and. Uh, on verify connection like whether it's able to connect or not okay and it should be able to connect because we saw that recent release pipeline was posted up from jenkins okay so that's my jenkins endpoint once you define your jenkins endpoint okay you will have uh, the populated into it you can have your source job so my job is nothing but my uh, the job which i created jenkins build job okay so jenkins build job is this one only right uh, this is job this is my job okay which i call jenkin build okay so that's one only is my jenkin build uh, and when, when i go to this particular service hooks back and that's what like uh, once i've added everything those details okay i've added this and i'm done and you can schedule this for fortnite as well this work and you need to have uh, this particular auto deploy onto your web app okay for this actually you need to do a little bit more stuff uh, where you will actually have an agent and this Grish. uh yeah uh, Grish. yeah just five minutes it will be done uh, uh, the display has gone and your voice is breaking okay 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 resume so you need to add uh, the you know for this you know uh, in order to deploy your uh, uh, via this release pipeline if you want to deploy your uh, successful build onto your web app you can do that you need to get this particular plugin okay and you can click this particular uh, add a task okay and you can search for uh, Azure app service deploy sort of stuff Azure app service okay and uh, once you've done that you have this particular app service task which is assigned up here okay so once that is done you are good to uh, you know you can configure this particular deploy azure web app service from uh, what is the app you want to put in is this one and you need to manage and add your azure subscription so it would authenticate with this particular bsts as well so once you add your subscription your uh, web app will also be displayed in here you can select your web app out of this all web app whatever you have okay and it's not good and you can like whenever a, uh, you know jenkins would trigger a build and then it will uh, trigger a, a call to create a release pipeline a release pipeline would push your code into this so the one particular way like we had certain few issues while integrating with this particular uh, solution where jenkins is not giving up a proper artifact uh, which my particular you know uh, 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 app service is expecting okay so that's why you can see a lot of you know uh, uh, issues in here and the errors which i'll be interested to show are i'll go to history so it's in my release my plan so i'll go and uh, go and check in my release my plan uh what is no the reason why it failed the simple message is like no package sheriff 
no package found okay it's not able to deploy it was able to run on agent and it was able to download all the artifacts but it was not able to you know find a proper package which it can deploy into azure app service okay and that's why it failed but what we did is like uh, we used uh, jenkins uh, inbuilt feature of uh, deploy onto azure web app so we uh, deployed our changes onto azure web app and ours is test well so i'll just refresh it this is our azure web app and i should be able to see my test well uh, changes reflecting here yes i can see that my both test 11 and test 12 changes are reflecting in here okay that's what i wanted to discuss for here today and uh, like what we did is like we sort of uh, have a build pipeline okay we have a build pipeline created on vsts and we already also had sort of release pipeline as well uh, you know defined on our vsts account